All right, welcome. Uh, in this uh, example, we will take a look at a very simple circuit with a resistor and a capacitor. Uh, unlike transit analysis, in this case, we will do what is known as a steady state analysis. Steady state means all the things have already settled down. And also, instead of a DC voltage, this is a AC voltage source. So there's 10 cosine omega, uh, 10 cosine 4T uh, as the incoming voltage source. And the question is, what is the current I of T going through the resistor and the capacitor since they are in series? And what is the voltage across the capacitor? So that's what we're uh, going to be looking for. And in order to do this, uh, since this is AC steady state, uh, we working with cosine and trig identities is difficult. So we will uh, do everything in the phasor domain. So here uh, we have the frequency omega equals 4. So omega, that's 4 right there, 10 cosine 4t. The amplitude of the signal is 10. So since we have only one voltage source and that's a fixed uh, omega 4 right here, we can convert this from cosine domain or the trig domain to a phasor domain. And in phasor domain, we're going to write it as VFS is equal to 10, the amplitude, and the phase angle. In this case, the phase angle, you can write this also as 40 plus zero degrees so the phase angle here is basically zero degrees right here so we'll write this as vs equals 10 zero degrees now we have five ohms and we have 0.1 farad capacitor now since we are working in the ac domain capacitances have impedance uh, so impedance for capacitance a capacitor is calculated by one over j omega c so that's the uh, equation for the impedance across impedance of the capacitor. Uh, 1 over j can also be written as negative j. So this can be written as negative j over omega c. In our case, omega is 4 and capacitor is 0.1. So uh, replacing those values, we end up getting negative j 2.5 ohms. So the impedance of this capacitor right here impedance is minus j 2.5 ohms. And in this circuit, we have a resistor and this capacitor or this impedance in series so we have a 5 ohm resistor and a minus j 2.5 ohm impedance in series so they add up and we get a total impedance of 5 minus j 2.5 ohms right so now if you look at this circuit we have a voltage source we have a impedance so what we are asked is the total current so the current is basically using Ohm's law is V over R, or in this case, there's no just R, there's actually impedance. So V over G total. So the current coming out of the source is the voltage divided by the impedance. And that's 10, zero degrees divided by five minus J 2.5. Now this phasor representation is in the polar coordinates. This is in the Cartesian coordinates. So let's convert this to its polar form. And that basically gives us uh, square root of 5 square plus 2.5 square and that basically gives us a total of 5.59 with an angle of negative 26.57. Now we have 10 angle 0 degrees divided by 5.59 angle minus 26.57 degrees. Now when phasors divide, when phasors divide, the magnitudes divide. So the magnitude of this is 10 divided by 5.59, which is going to be about 1.8, in 1.789 to be exact. And the angle, since it's division, is 0 degrees. So the resulting angle is basically 0 degrees minus this angle in the bottom. So we end up with a 1.789 as the magnitude and 26.57 degrees uh, as the angle, phase angle. Okay, and the unit is, of course, amps. Now, that's I in the phasor domain. Our initial problem was given in T, and we're asked to calculate I T, so converting that uh, to time domain is simple as this is the magnitude of the cosine. That's the phase angle of the cosine, and since the frequency was 4, omega was 4, we'll have 4 in the output as well. So I of T is 1.789 cosine omega T, which is 4T, plus this phase angle, 26.57 degrees amps. We're also asked to find VFT, so let's go and calculate the voltage now. So the voltage is current times the impedance. In this case, the voltage is actually the voltage across the capacitor. The current going through the capacitor is that I that we just calculated. So that's the I, phasor I right there. 
and we know the capacitance uh, or the impedance of that capacitance uh, which is minus j 2.5 so the total voltage across the capacitor so that's the voltage across the capacitor is current through the capacitor times the impedance of that capacitor so we get 1.789 angle 26.57 that's a current times minus j 2.5 ohms now minus j 2.5 ohms is same as saying negative 2.5 with a magnitude of 9 negative 90 because if you look at the imaginary uh, real axis right here so this is the j domain that's the imaginary axis and here's the real axis okay now we're saying we're saying that the total sorry we're saying that minus j minus j basically means right uh, minus j basically means right here that's negative j so that's j that's negative j negative j with a magnitude of 2.5 so if i was drawing a phase phasor for this it would be basically along this axis right here with a magnitude of 2.5 and an angle of negative 90 degrees so we can write this as 2.5 angle minus 90 that way now when phasors multiply you basically multiply the amplitudes 1.789 times 2.5 will give us 4.47 and the angles will add up so these angles will basically add up so 26.57 plus negative 90 is minus 63.43. So we get 4.47 as the magnitude and negative 63.43 as the phase angle of the voltage across the capacitor. Now going from fa voltage in phasor domain to voltage in time domain, here is a magnitude right here, 4.47. So we get 4.3 of T is equal to 4.47 cosine omega t which is 4t and the angle was minus 63.43 volts okay now we're also asked draw the phasor so let's draw the phasor so here's our imaginary axis uh, we have the imaginary axis right here and we have the real axis right here the current has an amplitude of 1.789 and is at an angle of positive 26.57 degrees the voltage has a magnitude of 4.47 so that's the magnitude of 4.47 and has an angle has an angle of minus 63.43 degrees so that's current through the capacitor and voltage across the capacitor now one of the things you can check if you got the if you have this correct is the current and the voltage across the capacitor are offset from each other by exactly 90 degrees that's what it should be for a purely capacitive thing so here we're looking at the current through the capacitor which is this voltage across the capacitor and you notice that 26.57 plus 63.43 is exactly 90 degrees and in the ca capacitor in capacitors co in the capacitor the current always leads the voltage so the angle of the current in this case is positive 26 and the voltage is negative 63 so current leads the voltage in the capacitor so that's the phasor diagram that this problem was asking us to draw